Hello, are we here? Are we live? Hello, lovely people. It's me, Nicole Jolly. Welcome to True Food TV <laughs> for my first ever live stream. I'm super excited, a little bit nervous. <laughs> Let's see who's here. Let's see who's here. Hello, Joel. Nice to see you here. You're first, right on. Uh, let's see. William Michael. Nice to see you. Michael Sylvester, Kenny, Dwayne, Tumala, Aaron. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy you could join me. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you guys come on, come on and join me, um, let me know who's here and where you guys are from because I might recognize you guys from the comments, but I don't always know where you're actually uh, writing from or watching from, so I'd love to know. Um, okay, so we are, oh, so many of you. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. <laughs> so um, again, I'm Nicole Jolly. I'm the host and creator of True Food TV, where we are so passionate about reconnecting all of you with where your food comes from um, and helping you understand your food. Um, it is such a deep passion of mine and I'm so excited that you guys have responded so well uh, to the content we've put out and have joined me here today, yay! <laughs> That's so great. So um, today we are going to um, talk a bit about the new episode that just came out a few days ago, Tomatoes, How Does It Grow? Um, and, uh, which is episode four, I think, of season three, uh, but it's actually the 18th episode, uh, that we've done of How Does It Grow? Uh, so that's 18 different foods, 18 different crops. I would love to hear what is your favorite episode so far and why. I would love to know why. Um, I don't know if anybody has been here since the beginning. Have you guys been watching since the beginning? Who remembers the very first episode? Anybody? I should look. Who remembers the first episode? Um, it all, what, what stands out in my mind most about that is that I was wearing this like really weird like private eye trench coat <laughs> and a horrible red hairnet. I remember that. <laughs> but, um, but I'm, just so thrilled that you're joining me today and um, we're going to talk about some behind the scenes stuff. I'm going to answer your questions about tomatoes. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the, like, the interesting facts that were basically cut and got left on the cutting room floor that I really loved, but for whatever reason, just didn't make it into the final video. And there are two big announcements that I'm going to make two big announcements about this channel. So stay tuned for that news. I wanna get your feedback on that. Um, but if you're just coming in, I see a lot of new comments, a lot of new people joining us right now. Um, I'm Nicole Jolly, this is True Food TV. And um, for those of you who don't know, you can also follow me on social. Is it this way? Yeah, this way. <laughs> um, where uh, you can keep up to date on what we're filming next and where I am and, and what's going on. Uh, so check me out there. Um, okay, so here's how it's going to work. Um, I see lots of comments coming in, questions. Um, I have uh, Mark helping me uh, triage all of those. And I'm going to first start with uh, the tomato focused uh, questions and then I'll circle back to broader questions uh, that you guys have been sharing. And for those of you who are new to the channel, who is Mark? Mark is the man behind the camera. Um, and all of those beautiful shots that you see in our episodes, it's his handiwork. He also does a bunch of other things, runs sound, he directs, he story edits, he does a whole bunch of stuff. He also happens to be my husband. <laughs> so uh, we're the team, uh, the primary team behind True Food TV. Okay, guys, what do you think? Well, should we jump into it? Oh, Debbie, hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie Salzberg. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, she has a rocking pat podcast. You should check her out, Just Forking Around. Um, okay, guys, so um, I wanna talk first about um, the 
way that we work with partners, because I'm sure uh, a lot of you have noticed um, that we had a partner on this tomato episode, and it was Prego. And um, I just want to tell you a little bit about how we work with them or how we worked with them. Um, we have been working with partners for past episodes. I don't know if you noticed, we did a series of um, like sort of 60 second cuts with Fresh Point. We've worked with Harney and Sons. We've worked with New Jersey Ag, a whole bunch of wonderful people. And we choose our sponsors based on, um, you know, how much they care about uh, agriculture and sourcing their food they're usually food companies and 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 where and their relationships to to their farmers so prego just seemed like a really natural partner for this episode because they really have deep relationships with their farmers when we were um on the shoot filming with dustin and ron timothy it was very clear that they intimately knew um the prego people who had accompanied us um to assist and, um, and they really just, you know, work deeply on issues of sustainability and any problems that come up. They're just, it, they said it themselves, they feel like a big family. So we just, we just loved that aspect of them. And um, this is true for all the partners we work with. Um, we are completely independent um, when it comes to storytelling. So there's no script approval. We're, uh, we maintain our sort of own editorial uh, independence. And that's important to us because we want to, um, you know, give, this, give you the stories in the best way that we feel um, uh, to tell. And um, Prego uh, entrusted us with that. And we were super thrilled about that and I think it came out really well I hope you guys agree um okay so just wanted to talk a little bit about that um and uh, clearly partnerships help us fund this content um I know the number one question that I get asked all the time um in the comments section is how can you make more episodes of how does it grow and make them faster. So um, partnerships are one way um, that we're, sponsorships are one way that we're exploring to help fund this content. And I will talk to you a little bit more later about um, some ways that you could help produce this content with us. So stay tuned for that. Okay, oh my goodness, so many people coming in. Hello to Brazil and the Netherlands, Nepal, Central America, India. I am so grateful that you are all here with me. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I am going to, I wanna tell you a little bit about um, Dustin and Ron. Um, Dustin and Ron, uh, were just wonderful farmers. They are the farmers in our tomato episode. And um, and we, uh, the way that, uh, another question I get often asked is how do you choose your farms? And there's a lot that goes into it and it changes per episode. Um, these farmers clearly were farmers that grew for Prego, our partner. But we always vet um, the farmers. We want to know the depth of their knowledge. We want to make sure there's some chemistry between um, them and me. So I always have a very long conversation with them, over an hour, usually two hours, on the phone, where I pick their brains on everything they know about their crop, about the story of who they are, uh, everything. <laughs> I don't think they've ever been asked more questions, at least the Timothys, about tomatoes than, than I probably lobbed at them. But um, they were wonderful. I think a lot of people noticed they had great chemistry and uh, with me, and I think we just had a lot of fun as evidence with that Rubik's Cube gag that we did. <laughs> um, but uh, one question that came up in the comments that I want to address, which I thought was really funny because I hadn't noticed it, do you guys see that? So that's Dustin and Timothy in their hats, which say TF. And uh, who was it? It was Max, right? I'm going to expand this down because I can't read Max's comment. Okay, Max Amps said, I noticed Dustin and his dad's cap has your logo on it. Do you sell merch? And you know, the whole time we were there and the whole time I was editing this video, I never really put two and two together myself. But their TF hats you know, kind of do look like TF, right? But they're Timothy Farming. That was the TF. And in fact, Dustin was really sweet. He was wearing the clean hat at first. And then when his uh, dad came on to join, 
uh, he swapped it out for the dirty hat and gave his dad the clean one, which I thought was really sweet. Um, but do we sell TF hats? Stay tuned. I might be talking about something like that later. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we've had um, a question come in. I'm not sure um, who. I apologize. I don't know who asked. Maybe it's many of you. Um, but uh, what is the difference in taste or what about red and black tomato? Okay, so um, what is the difference in taste maybe between red and black tomatoes? Um, you know, really, I think it's from variety to variety. Like even if you get two different red tomatoes, they can co taste completely different. Um, you know, every variety has its own unique taste um, and texture. And in fact, I think somebody had asked me, uh, maybe I can get them up, about um, how they tasted. Uh, that's right. It was Mr. Chicken Warrior left um, a comment in the comment section. How do they taste when they are fresh compared to fresh market tomatoes? So these were processing tomatoes that we did the episode on. And um, it, it didn't make it into the main video, but I don't know if you noticed, if you go back and watch this sort of intro montage over the music um, at the beginning, I am biting into a tomato and I did taste it and it was delicious. It was incredibly sweet. Um, I think that the only difference that I would say of those tomatoes to fresh market were they're a bit, um, the texture, you know, wasn't what I want in a fresh tomato, but it's great for, you know, whatever it was being made into, into sauce. Um, but yeah, they tasted sweet. I was, I was actually surprised. Um, okay. So let's go on. I've got so many great questions, guys, and I know you're throwing them at me. Um, uh, Mark is triaging that right now. Um, okay. So, uh, oh, this is a fun one. In the comments section, uh, we had Comrade Stalin, indeed, said, the real question is, was the Rubik's Cube solved? And if you guys don't know what he's talking about, you have to go back and watch the episode um, because I talk about a Rubik's Cube. And then at the end, we had some bloopers with the Rubik's Cube. And all I'll say about that is that I am personally terrible at the Rubik's Cube. I'm terrible with anything that's sort of math related. Um, but Dustin, I'm going to leave that a secret. Maybe I'll reveal that another time. Is that a tease? That's all right. <laughs> You'll survive. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So there are some, well, if you're first joining us, if you're if you're just joining us now, I'm Nicole Jolly. I am the host and co-creator of True Food TV, where we are so passionate about reconnecting people with where their food comes from. And you can find us, of course, on True Food TV, on YouTube, but also on these social handles. Um, on YouTube, make sure you're clicking that bell so you get notifications whenever we have new episodes or any other content coming at you, live streams. We'll be doing more of these, I think, if you like them. <laughs> and um, and I'm also um, putting things up on the community community tab over on YouTube all the time, uh, which might say inbox, I think, on, on your mobile phone. Um, so engage with me. I love talking with you guys. I don't want this to just be it. Um, and uh, okay, so let me, let me go back to um, some of the stuff that I had queued up here. Um, so some of the fun facts that didn't make it into the script, but I find really interesting, um, is that um, tomatoes are actually technically, botanically, fruits. So we had um, a, a friend actually on Facebook uh, named David Mann. He's been a longtime supporter of True Foods. Shout out to David. Um, he had this great word that he made up, which I loved, which is um, that tomatoes are his favorite fugitable, which is great. I, I mean, I love that because culinarily, gastronomically, we consider them vegetables, but botanically, they are actually fruits. So I love it. Fruitables. <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, 
And the other thing um, that I loved that didn't make it in um, is the connection to the nightshade family. So tomatoes are part of the nightshade family. And if you've seen our potato episode, you know that potatoes are also part of the nightshade family, is also part of that family. And now potatoes come from the Andes and so do tomatoes, like you saw in the great animation um, that... Lucia Borjas did for us for this um, episode. Um, I just loved that they were both part of the Nightshade family and both came from the same region. Um, so it all sort of makes sense. I'm such a geek for for like food names and history. I don't know if you guys are. Tell me, are you guys geeky about this stuff too? Do you like when I go into this? Because I'm also thinking about an upcoming episode um, where the, the the name of the food is really interesting and I would love to go into that but I don't know are you guys are you guys into that sort of thing um so um uh but while we're on um tomato history I want to bring up uh, a question that was left in the comments by um Leanne which was great um she says, how did the Spaniards bring the tomato from South America to Europe without the tomatoes rotting? Excellent question. I, uh, my hypothesis, and I'm sure there's research out there that would give us the right answer, but is that they brought them via seeds. They didn't take the whole tomato with them because it would have rotted, but they took the seeds and they cared for the seeds and planted them when they got to Spain and and beyond. And that's probably for most foods that cross the Atlantic from the Americas to wherever. Um, but great question, Leanne. Thanks for that. Um, okay. So um, let's jump back in. I know you guys, I'm seeing you guys are, oh, let, let me just circle back. Uh, some of the favorite episodes, cranberries, red peppers, um, asparagus, which is um, the one that we did before tomatoes. Um, avocados, uh, mushrooms. Hey, mushrooms, first episode. That was the answer to that. Uh, pecans, I, I, I also loved. I loved that I got to ride the tractor in in pecans. That was awesome. <laughs> Gigino the Flying Farmer. Oh, that's so close to my heart. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that one too. Thanks for that. I love it. Okay, so let me jump back to um, some tomato stuff. And I want to, before I jump in, if you guys are new and just joining us, um, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Click the bell for notifications so you never miss an episode. Um, join me on social too, and here are my social handles. <laughs> okay, so um, jumping back into um, tomatoes. Ooh, I've got a question from Potato Ninja on your rescue. Um, I have a very important question about tomatoes. Back in my village, the potato plant used to bear flowers and those flowers turn into tomatoes. Does this happen in the US too? Well, I'm, I'm very curious about that. I've never heard of a potato plant bearing tomatoes, but like I said earlier, um, the you know, they're of the same nightshade family. So um, I don't know what's going on there. I've never heard that before, but that's really curious. Thanks for sharing that. Very interesting. Um, okay. So um, I want to talk a little bit about behind the scenes um, making of the tomato episode. And um, some of my favorite scenes in this episode, I'm going to put up... Um, are the are the is the footage uh, taken inside these tomato trailers? So essentially, Mark climbed up in there, got into the tomato trailer, which is being um, pulled by the harvester and is in constant motion because it's keeping up with the harvester, which is as you can see, propelling those tomatoes inside. And so he was in the trailer, which is swaying back and forth. He's trying to film and there's like tomato juice at the bottom of the trailer because, you know, there is a bit of, you know, crushing going on. Um, and to me, that's like just so imp I'm so impressed by his dedication to just like get those shots, um, which were incredibly difficult. And I love I think that kind of stuff makes the video. Do you guys like that sort of thing? Um, and uh and in fact, I have 
some behind the scenes footage of him actually in there. You can see him in there. I put that on um, my Instagram here. I put it, um, True Food TV, on my Instagram. Scroll down, scroll back, and you'll be able to see that sort of behind the scenes video. I think it's fun. Um, but while I'm talking about that, uh, there was somebody who left a question, a uh, comment, uh, Supasith Chongliratam. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm not saying that correctly. He says, how aren't tomatoes at the bottom of the trailer crushed by their fellow upper tomatoes? Which is an excellent question. And I cannot guarantee that there isn't a lot of crushing going on down there. But one thing that you have to remember is that these tomatoes in particular, because they're processing tomatoes, um, and because Prego has their facility within a mile of these fields, there's not a whole lot of time for the tomatoes to like develop bruises or anything. They are just going from the field right to the processing facility and they're being chopped or crushed or whatever anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. If these were going to fresh market, that would be a big deal, but they wouldn't be harvested that way, right? <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Oh, another um, question came in from Alicia Juguan. Um, me and my mom always plant tomatoes, but they always have this white powdery stuff on their stems and leaves, and the plant always dies. What should we do? <laughs> well, I, I do not profess to be um, a gardening expert. Everything that I've learned comes directly from the farmers that I talk to. Um, I do have a small garden that I garden from in my little backyard here in my city house in Philadelphia. Um, so I do have a little bit of experience, but I am not an expert in any way. Um, I'm wondering if it's a kind of powdery mildew, uh, which can uh, sometimes occur when uh, you get too much rain. And if the plants are too packed in, um, and the moisture can't really dry out, that sun can't penetrate and dry out the leaves and the stems. It could be that, I, I don't know for sure. Um, but maybe try um, giving them more space and hoping for the best when it comes to weather, which you know we can't control, as I went into in the tomato episode. <laughs> um, okay, um, so I wanted to also talk to you about harvesting, the experience of harvesting tomatoes. Um, and riding the harvester, um, watching that conveyor belt of tomatoes go by. So uh, one thing about that harvester is it's really loud. So I wasn't able to sort of record any talking to camera as I was experiencing that. Um, but what I can tell you in retrospect is that I did not expect it to be as punishing as it is because you think you just ride around on this tractor you're like watching tomatoes go by it doesn't look so bad I mean first of all the tomatoes are going by at like a furious rate I felt like like Lucille Ball you know that like <laughs> scene where she's like stuffing chocolates in her mouth that's how I felt I, I just felt like my eyes couldn't hook up on anything um, but what you're supposed to be doing is like looking for lumps of dirt and twigs and you know really awful looking fruit which is rare um, but to, to, to take that off the the belt um, but at the same time there is so much debris and there's so much dust these machines kick up so much dust that it is just I, I mean inhaling all of that is really intense and if you notice that the real person the woman who was riding the harvester, the real person who was in charge of that, she was really covered up. She had like a bandana across her mouth and she was well covered up because of course there's also the hot California sun. And you know, one thing I say till I'm blue in the face about making these ep episodes is my favorite thing is that people get to see the amazing work that goes into harvesting our food and how intense it is. Um, these these people, and they're mostly Latin immigrants in this country, work so hard. And I appreciate them so much. And at least in this country, our food is so cheap because of their work. Um, they don't get, often get paid a whole lot. Um, and it keeps, you know, food costs down for us. Uh, but, uh, you know, one reason why I, you know, if you go back into the early episodes, I didn't really harvest like mushrooms, cauliflower. I didn't, uh, gar garlic, no. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't harvesting. And then it dawned on us that like the people who harvest make it look so easy because they're so skilled at what they do. And so I decided 
to sort of step in and be your conduit so you could experience what that really is like. And inevitably, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at it because I don't have the skills and experience. And hopefully it comes through um, how difficult it is. I know it also is, I mean, I'm having fun because it's it's quite, it's a new experience for me and I'm probably laughing and I'm naturally sort of a bubbly person, but um, it's really tough work and I hope that comes through. Um, do you guys like that, those that part of the episodes, um, I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Um, okay, I get, I have a question here from Mike856MS. He says, what is your favorite go-to um, tomato? My favorite go-to tomato. Okay, so the favorite one, my favorite one that I have been growing in my garden, which I don't, I rarely see in the stores um, unless it's a great store that has connection to maybe a local farmer's um is a brandy wine and it's a it's a large tomato that is sort of pinkish uh when it's ripe it doesn't really get like a true red color but it has so much nuance and its flavor it's so delicious so look out for a brandy wine if you can i don't know where you're writing me from um but if you're just joining us hi welcome <laughs> i'm nicole jolly i am the host and co-creator of true food tv where we endeavor to reconnect all of us with where our food comes from. Um, I should uh, let you know where you can also connect with me up here on social and hang in there with me because yes, we're right now we're talking about the tomato episode. Um, I'd love to hear your food feedback about the tomato episode, um, but we are also inching our way to two big announcements. So hang in there with me. Um, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure you're clicking the bell so you get notifications whenever there's a new episode or activity on our channel. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, and I should note, I'm, uh, there is a lag on the video stream. Hang in there with us. I'm sorry, this is our first time doing this and we will sort it out for next time. I apologize if it's getting um, difficult to watch. Um, we will try to figure it out. <laughs> oh, hey, Brandon Miniman. Thank you so much for that super chat. You're so kind. Where are you, where are you writing, writing from? I'd love to, I'd love to know. Um, and oh, Krithi Harry says her, her seven-year-old watches and loves our episodes, especially our garam masala carrots. So uh, he did that twice. Yay, good job. Um, so we, we have done recipe videos in the past and um, there have been episodes where we include a recipe at the end of the video. Um, we're going to try that again for the next episode, um, but I'd love to hear your feedback on... on um, on recipe stuff. Do you want to see recipes in the episode, in the How Does It Grow episodes? Would you rather see that as other additional content on the channel? I'd love to know. I'm a very passionate cook myself. Um, oh, Cherokee Purple is amazing. Yes, uh, I'm paying attention. Brandon, ever have a Cherokee Purple tomato? Yes, they're delicious. I love that. And Certain on One also agrees, I see. <laughs> um, okay. So let's get back to it. Um, there is, uh, there were a lot of questions about um, the sunflowers in this episode. I'd love to address that. Uh, so there were those beautiful um, fields of sunflowers, which is part of Dustin's rotation of his crops. So he does tomatoes to sunflowers, back to tomatoes, to beans, tomatoes, sunflowers as his rotation. And the, the beans help add nitrogen back into the soil and the sunflowers are not as intensive with taking nutrition out as the tomatoes. So it just helps build back the soil and the soil health. Um, but I got some two really great questions I want to put up. Oh, here's a picture of those sunflowers. Yeah, beautiful, right? Um, so Eel Sunny Low says, what does he do with the sunflowers? Which is an excellent question. And Dustin basically, what he does is he grows the sunflowers for their seed, but he's not selling the seeds, um, not, not selling them for consumers to eat. He's selling those seeds to other farmers. In fact, a lot of Eastern European farmers who are growing them um, to harvest sunflower oil, sunflower seed oil. So that's what he's doing. And um, we got another question related to that. In fact, I think this is one of many. 
but um, one came in from Iltjoa and also from Verna, Lucia Saraga, uh, and they're both asking, how about a sunflower episode? Um, and I think the other one said, is sunflowers our next episode? It's not our next episode. It's not. In fact, our next episode is another one I'm super excited about. Um, if you love the landscapes in this tomato episode, this is going to blow your mind. The next one is, you know, the landscapes are epic, absolutely epic. Um, I'll give you a hint. We went out to Idaho, Idaho to film that one. Um, and it's not potatoes because we did potato episode already, right? <laughs> so, um, but uh, sunflowers, we will definitely be doing a sunflower episode. I'm super interested uh, in that, especially after seeing those flowers. Um, okay, so let's see. What else do we have going here? Oh, certain on one. Thank you for that super chat. And I apologize if I've missed anybody else so far. Hopefully Mark will pick those out for me. Um, I've actually, she says, or he, I apologize. Um, I've actually got a tomato growing right now that is a cross using a Cherokee purple as a parent. Wow, so cool. Um, I'd love to see what that comes out to be. Send me a picture. Uh, post it, you know, send it to me on one of my social channels. Um, I'd love to, to hear how that goes. Very cool. I love that there are growers here too. We have to help each other out. I have to say, most of my tomatoes this year were eaten by girls, which is a problem with city living. I put netting over and everything, but they are really crafty. <laughs> they got in there anyway. <laughs> okay, um, let's move on. There is an important question I want to get to before opening um, it up to sort of more general stuff, um, which is one I want to put up from Tubers and Potatoes. Um, they write, it seems like there's whole chunks that are missing when you're talking about growing. And this was a comment on the tomato episode. How about the soil preparation, tilling, where's the planting, etc., etc. Okay, so this is an issue we come up to um, almost all the time with all of the episodes, which is often the season that there is planting going on is an entirely different season to the harvest. Um, there's a few exceptions where we were able to show it for like our cauliflower episode because that particular farm in California was constantly growing uh, cauliflower. So we were able to show the whole story, um, but often we can't and we have to choose and there's more action when it comes to harvest. Um, there's not a whole lot of action when it comes to planting. Uh, so we always choose harvest and we try to um, tell a bit of the planting story. Um, sometimes we have to use imagery or, you know, whatever. Um, so we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about the parts that we don't show. Uh, we just think, you know, in video, good video storytelling um, is stuff that you can actually, you know, film and uh, not just yak about. Uh, it's also, we don't see this series as a a step-by-step -step guide to how to plant that crop. It is really just giving people a sense of what it takes. Um, and, and, and I have to filter some of the more, what I think is the more interesting um, bits um, about what it takes to, to grow our food and how, how it gets to our table. Um, so that's why we can't tell the whole story. Um, but maybe one day we'll get to go for a planting season and come back, we'll see. Uh, we're, we've been working on ways <laughs> to help, you know, beef up this content. I will be talking about that soon. And if you've just joined me, I'm Nicole Jolly. I am the host here at True Food TV, where we are really passionate about helping us all reconnect with where our food come, comes from and helping us understand it better. Um, you can connect with me on social, subscribe on YouTube, Click the bell so you get notifications. Um, great. Okay. So, oh, I'm getting such lovely, um, such lovely comments here. I'm sorry I'm not getting to them all. Um, the writing, camera work, editing of your episodes is second to none. Thank you, Brian uh, Terrell. That is so sweet. Um, there's uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I need a Terminator for the squirrels. Yeah, when you get a Terminator, let me know, Pipe to Devnel. <laughs> I want him too. <laughs> um, okay, oh, okay, Potato Ninja says that he would love to make a super comment, but it doesn't work in work in their country, in, in, in your country. Thank you, that's so kind of you to want to do that. Stay tuned because I am going to be talking about different ways that you can um, help and contribute if you feel uh, the need. <laughs> so hang in there. Um, okay, so some of these other questions uh, that were unrelated uh, to the tomato episode, I want to get to some of these. Um, Alexandre uh, Andrejo uh, says, an episode about South American cocoa, please. Yes. Um, guys, there's a list, a very long list <laughs> of crops that I want to do and we will get to. And um, there are so many um, international crops that we are desperate to do. Um, obviously, logistically, there are lots of challenges to getting our little crew um, there to um, these places. I'll be talking um, in just a little bit um, about the ways that we're coming up, um, that we've come up with to to hopefully make that happen. Uh, but Coco is high on the list. I would absolutely love to do that. Um, and we will do it soon. Um, any plans for Armenian cucumbers? Okay, Giovanni Carrillo. I have to admit, what? What are specifically Armenian cucumbers? I've heard of Persian cucumbers in this country, which are the smaller ones. Are they like that with a very thin skin? Um, but what I can say, Giovanni, is stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep you hanging, hanging, but I think you get my drift. Um, Mr. Foe, will you do a video on more tropical plants? You are not the first, Mr. Foe to say that to us. I know I have so many of you um, who live in tropical climates and are dying to see tropical uh, fruits and, and spices and yes, 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 yes. And we are endeavoring to get some of those in uh, this coming season. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, We've got um, William Yaj. Okay, you were one of the first ones here. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to you. But um, what's my age and where am I from? Okay, let's start with um, the easy part. Uh, where am I from? I am from New York originally, from Long Island. Um, and what's my age? You should know better. You never ask a woman her age. I'll tell you I'm in my 30s. But actually, I don't, I don't give very, very personal details out, but I'll tell you I'm in my 30s. Um, okay. Kenny Miramontes Huerta. Oh, Huerta, sorry. Um, what is your favorite fruit, vegetable, and nut? Wow. Okay. That's like asking me to choose my favorite child, <laughs> honestly. So, and if you ask me that um, tomorrow, I probably would change my mind. But... Favorite fruit, um, I love a mangosteen. That might be my favorite fruit, uh, but I also love mangoes and strawberries and great peaches and okay. Um, favorite vegetable, probably eggplant. I think aubergine. I think that it is so versatile. You can do so much with it. So many, and it works in so many different cuisines all over the world. So I love it. Um, my favorite nut is probably a pecan and I'm not or a pecan for those of you who say it that way <laughs> I know I I know I upset a few of you with the way that I pronounce that nut uh from the pecan episode or pecan episode um but and I'm not just saying it because I did that episode I really love them um oh god shout out to all of you from all over the world I'm, I'm so humbled all of you in India and the Philippines and Indonesia um, other parts of Asia getting up so early to come hang out with me. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. It's so, so great. Okay. Um, uh, Weiber, um, you said, when will we get a new video? I am working on that new video. So, um, so one thing maybe I can talk about now is uh, what it takes to make these episodes. We are actually working on... Uh, in addition to the next How Does It Grow episode, um, 
a behind the scenes uh, video that's dedicated to showing you the entire process that it takes to make a how does it grow video. Um, because I think as you guys can tell, a lot goes into it. And, um, and even, you know, so much of the work happens before we even touch ground on, at the farm and film. And then after that, of course, we're editing and I am right now the primary editor. So I'm editing new, new episodes and I'm also researching new episodes and I'm interviewing farmers and I'm going out filming. So there's a lot of interruptions uh, right now. Our team is tiny. So um, I'll be talking very soon, very shortly about what we're doing to help uh, create more content quicker with your help. So stay tuned. Um, global medium. Uh, you said earlier, I can picture you as a homesteader living in the countryside and growing your own food. Is that something you might consider in the future? Okay, so um, like I said, I already garden and I love gardening um, and it's something I want to do more of, especially with my son. I have a three-year-old son and he loves to be out in the dirt as well. Um, but I have been to a lot of farms and I know how hard it is to grow food. I know all the challenges. And so I don't think I could ever attempt to uh, subsist on what I grew. So no, I don't think I would be a homesteader, but I love, I, I, I can imagine myself living in a more rural setting, um, but I will leave the real heavy growing to the farmers and frequent my local farmer's market and support them. <laughs> Thanks for a great question. Um, I've got, wow, okay, I'm sorry. Huiyonios, I'm sorry. Um, hi, I was, I was the one who asked about doing pineapples. Yes, hi. How did you get into agriculture? By the way, pineapples, high on the list as well. How did you get into agriculture and did you focus on agriculture in school or something else? So, um, no. I did not focus on agriculture. Um, I went to school, I studied English literature and then became a journalist. So I wrote for newspapers for a very long time. Um, so I know how to research and write, <laughs> which comes in handy when making a How Does It Grow episode. Um, but the agricultural part came, um, it's really sort of part of the inspiration story of this series. So I used to write about food a, a, fair, a fair deal. Um, I used to, uh, for one magazine, I used to write restaurant reviews. And, and I really realized one day, it was like a, like a light bulb moment. I was um, washing some lentils in my kitchen. And I just looked at these things and I thought, huh, I can't picture how these things grow. I don't know what the plant looks like. And and I thought about other foods and I realized I have no idea how my food grows. Like that's, how can I profess to be any kind of expert in food and, and not know such a crucial part um, of the story? So um, that got me really interested in agriculture and trying to understand it better. And 18 episodes into How Does It Grow, I think I do have, um, I have through osmosis and research, um, have a lot of understanding about how um, our agricultural systems work. So, sorry, long-winded story there. Um, I'm so sorry if the stream is lagging for some of you. Um, we're going to make sure that we get it right for next time. Um, okay, let's see. We have Brian uh, Terrell. You're an awesome host. Thank you. Um, yeah, great. Um, who else do we have here? Um, Hello, hi Laddie from Indonesia. Nice to see you. Um, what drove you to create the How Does It Grow series? This is from Let's Eat. Uh, I imagine you had a variety of ideas of food videos you could make. How did you land on this? So I just told you that origin story. I didn't see your question, um, so I hope that answered it. Um, and you know what? When we first started the series, uh, I didn't edit, Mark didn't shoot. We really rallied a bunch of friends who were um, professionals uh, to our cause and they were out of the generosity of their hearts um, filmed with us in those uh, early days um, for no money and edited uh, our 
our videos um, until we learned how to do it on our own. Um, so it was really, it took a village. And we also uh, did a Kickstarter in the early days. Is anybody here who are from the early Kickstarter days? Are any of my original Kickstarters here? Um, we uh, ran a Kickstarter and, uh, you know, raised some money for a few of those first episodes. Um, so this community has really helped grow the How Does It Grow series. Um, Jenny Lamb, hi, says, congratulations on the series. I love it. Can't get enough of it. Thank you so much. Um, I have learned a lot. Thank you for enabling the subtitling option. It has allowed me um, to share it even more. Um, huge shout out to a um, volunteer member of our team, Wei Peng, who has rocked out um, the subtitles on all of our videos recently. I don't know if you've noticed, but go back and watch all of the How Does It Grows. They all have subtitles now, um, and she has been doing so much stuff for us. Uh, Wei, you are a rock star. Thank you. Um, okay, who else do we have? Oh, I should check my time. Okay, we're okay. Uh, let's just get in a few more um, questions. Um, Fix, fix that lagging. <laughs> Hi, Ramin. <laughs> yes, we will fix that lagging next time, I promise. Um, and, uh, and how does it grow coffee? Yes, Alexandra Araya. Yes, coffee, definitely. Um, I know that you all know that I love tea, but what you don't know is that I also love coffee. <laughs> so that will definitely happen. Um, hello, Nicole, what's your favorite fruit or veggie to grow? That's an excellent question. Um, I love tomatoes. Tomatoes are just so, I, I, I mean, okay. So guys, I made sort of a commitment to myself um, maybe two years ago that I would only eat tomatoes in season. And that meant in season to my area and that oh, otherwise sorry fresh tomatoes let me back up I made a commitment to only eat fresh tomatoes while they're in season in my area and otherwise I just use tinned tomatoes um, when I need to cook with them um, so I grow them and I buy them locally from my farmer's market and some of my uh, local grocery stores are supplied by some local farmers um, there's a wonderful a nonprofit organization, Red Tomato, that has been working in the Northeast of the United States to bring fresh vine ripened tomatoes to stores. Um, it's rare these days, like I said in my tomato video, but there are people working to change that. Um, okay, guys, we've got um, 10 more minutes. Oh, hi, my four year old daughter says, Hi, Danny McNulty. Hi, hi, Danny's daughter. Oh, everyone. Oh, we go to the grocery store. She points out just like Nicole Jolly. That just, guys, I love it. I'm low-key fangirling. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Um, hearing about your kids, learning about that stuff, that just makes my heart sing. It really, really does. Okay. Uh, any clues for the new episode? Um, I said Idaho. Epic, epic landscapes. And a food... That. I don't know where you're from. Wait, who just asked me that? Um, LCHO Media. If you're in the United States, um, it's the fundamental ingredient in a very, very popular food that a lot of us weren't really eating in a big way um, maybe 10 years ago. So there, that's all I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to move on to those two big announcements that I mentioned um, earlier in the live stream. Um, so, as I mentioned, you all often say, can you make these episodes quicker? And um, I mean, more frequently, I should say. Um, and that is what we really, really want to do. Like I said, the core of our team is just me and Mark. We do have people volunteer and help us out when they can. Um, but it's just the two of us. And this is not our full-time day job yet. So um, we, you know, we do this as we can and partners like Prego allow us to focus more on the content, but we are devising ways where you guys can help us, help us grow this channel, which by the way, guys, we just hit, we're over 200,000 subscribers. That's you guys. Thank you so much. I 
just never thought I would see this day. <laughs> it's so cool. Thank you so much for that. Um, and if you're new here, become a subscriber too and click the bell for notifications. <laughs> um, so two big announcements. One goes back to, remember when I mentioned that? Some of you have asked, do you have True Food TV merchandise? We are working on it. And if you are a loyal fan of this channel, you'll notice that we had a poll up recently about kinds of merchandise that you guys want. We are starting with, you know, your common apparel items like hats and t-shirts. Um, and then you guys also expressed, expressed interest in kitchen goods and merchandise uh, to use in the kitchen. Um, so we'll work our way up to developing those. So we're hoping to roll that out within the next couple of months. If you buy a piece, piece of merchandise, you are investing into the next episode. Um, and the second big thing is, drum roll please, <laughs> memberships. Do you guys know about this? So YouTube has just recently rolled out the capacity to do a membership program. So sort of what everybody's been doing on Patreon, but within the YouTube home. And we are working to roll that out. And so if you become a sustaining member, you will get exclusive content that we will be talking about very, very soon. So I want you to keep an eye out for that and let me know um, what kind of sort of exclusive features you would be interested in um, because I want to hear from you like what more content would you would you like to see from us um, things like even like sort of like things like stickers or signed photographs I don't know are you guys into that stuff I'd love to hear your feedback on that but we are developing that right now and that would enable you to have an investment in how this series builds and grows um I really feel like this is like a whole team effort <laughs> do you guys feel like that <laughs> but um here I'm gonna oh Ale Alexandre thank you so much for that um super chat donation I really appreciate it I mean everything counts here guys thank you so much I do feel like I'm like on NPR all of a sudden doing a pledge drive. Sorry. Um, but let's see. Uh, let me try to take, I've got just a few more minutes left. So let me just take a few more of your questions. Um, uh, Alexander Araya says, Kale? Would you guys like to see a Kale video? I didn't know if everybody's sick of Kale. Kale is like everywhere here in the US. Do you guys want to see Kale? Um, Oh, thank you, LCHO Media. Thank you so much for how does it grow. She's, they say we love it so much. Thank you for telling me that. We really run on your encouragement, guys. I really, your 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 feedback really sustains us. Um, oh, thank you, Tony O. Thank you so much for your videos. Thank you so much. Um, Lego Master 101, is there any reason why all of the fruit, like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, cherries, and grapes, all have mold on them in inside the stores <laughs> okay wow yeah so if you guys go back and look at our raspberry episode um towards the end of it we do talk a little bit about this um gosh those berries are so perishable like just so delicate and um if you think of like things like uh, strawberries with their sea seeds which are actually the fruit there we did an episode about that uh short quick bite um and, you know, raspberries, there's all these little places for bacteria to get into and particularly fungus. So even, um, you know, even the organic fruit that you buy uh, will usually have some kind of fungicide on it because these particular fruits are just so susceptible to it. Um, so, you know, it's the the changing temperatures, they go on a truck, which is one temperature, they get offloaded into a holding area, they go out onto the floor. That constant moisture change will just encourage the bacteria that's already on there, the, the fungus that might have um, clinged onto it to, to grow. So it's just really delicate fruits. Um, but thank you for that question. Um, thank you, uh, Rebel Railroader. You love the show. Um, it's so fun to watch. Thank you so much. Um, ah, my adventures. Um, what is your diet philosophy on healthy eating? Um, Wow. Okay. So I, 
ah, diet is like a word I don't love, um, but maybe like my lifestyle, I eat everything. I am not afraid of sugar. Um, I just um, eat a lot of home cooking. I cook for myself. I have a very small, small, like one shelf of my pantry has uh, packaged items which are basically sort of still ingredient based. Like I mentioned tin tomatoes, maybe coconut milk. Um, what else is in there? Uh, maple syrup, um, mustards, things like that. Um, I, uh, I haven't eaten cereal, packaged cereal in maybe five years. I make my own granola. I feel like if you can control what you put in your body, if you know all of the ingredients that you put in your body, you're going to be okay. Do some exercise, um, eat more vegetables than you probably already do. Um, maybe, well, definitely less meat, more vegetables. Um, but I love cheese. I love, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't withhold any foods from myself. Um, I just try to eat in moderation. You guys know I'm not like stick thin. I like to eat and I'm not going to give that up. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm healthy and that's, that's the point. Um, okay, so um, I've got just a few more minutes. I want to just get to some of you guys. Uh, thank you, YN. Uh, your videos are amazing. Just keep them coming. Thank you so much. Um, my name's not Rob, love your energy, thank you. Um, I'm so sorry about this connection, guys. I see that the, the connection is lagging and we will, um, we will fix that next time, I promise. Do you guys want there to be a next time? I hope so. <laughs> Let me know if you liked this. Um, thank you, A. Joshua, you deserve more subs. Help us spread the word, guys. If every one of you help by getting a friend to subscribe, it would go a long way. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, Angie says corn is the best veggie. That is a really great veggie. Um, why did you stop saying how does it grow? Oh, that's a great one. That's from uh, Wail123. Um, do you guys miss that? Yeah, should I go back to that? Uh, I don't know. We were just experimenting with different ways uh, to, to get into the stories, but um, I'm glad to hear that you guys miss it and that you noticed it, right? Uh, that's cool. Um, is it okay to pick lemons if they are still green? Love your channel, Deborah Mwang. Um, as far as I know, there is nothing uh, that, you, that you have to worry about. Um, they just, you know, won't have developed as many sugars. Now, of course, they're a sour fruit. By and large, there are some sweet lemons, but they'll be just more acidic than they would be if they were ripe. So the balance might be off. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Alexandre. Oh, it's not much, but I hope it can help. It does help. Thank you so much. That's you guys are are so so kind. Um, don't forget to thumbs up too. Yeah, thank you. 420 Niles, you're on the ball. Thank you so much. What is your accent from? I'll, I'll hit that one uh, last. So DD1TSPK says, uh, <laughs> where's your accent from? I'm a mutt now. So I'm originally from New York. I went to university in Boston. I lived in Madrid for a while, did some traveling in Italy. I'm married to a Brit. So it is like a whole mishmash. <laughs> so you can't really you know, tell anymore. But guys, thank you so, so much for joining me here. Hit that bell button so you get notifications for things like this. Um, talk with me on, on social. Talk with me. I love hearing from you. This was incredible. And I promise we'll get better with the live, the live stream. Um, thank you so much uh, for joining me. And, um, and I look forward to getting that new episode out for you. Um, but in the meantime, go watch Tomatoes again and uh, uh, see if you can pick up on some of the things that we talked about um, with those things in mind. Watch it anew. Um, and thank you so much for your support, guys. You are lovely people. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>